Let's talk about a couple of teams that stunned me as far as looking the complete opposite of extraordinary. Number one, the Indianapolis Colts. Wow. Wow. I understand the Texans might not be as bad as they as they're perceived to be. I don't think Davis Mills is all that bad of a quarterback at all. Lovey Smith is an underrated coach. He always has been. But the Indianapolis Colts have a hell of a roster, and we know that to be true. We saw it firsthand last year. They kicked the living hell out of the Bills in Buffalo. They have Jonathan Taylor, the best running back in the league, arguably. At least top three. And we saw it on full display yesterday. You bring in Matt Ryan, a former MVP. You have Michael Pittman. They were good last year with Carson Wentz. I felt coming into this season, Matt Ryan was a extensive upgrade over Carson Wentz. And with a weak division, I felt the Colts were going to be a prime contender to go to the playoffs this year. They looked abysmal yesterday against a Houston Texans team that the Buffalo Bills routed 40 to nothing just a season ago. Very strange how things operate in the NFL. The Bills beat the Texans 40 to nothing last year. They might as well have lost 40 to nothing to the Indianapolis Colts a season ago. Colts came out flat-footed against the Houston Texans and result in a tie week one against a much inferior team. And I had looked at the Colts and thought that that division was going to be theirs for the keeping this coming season. I'm not so sure. Then again, we saw what the Tennessee Titans put on display against just as an inferior team in the New York Giants. What the hell was going on with the Tennessee Titans yesterday? Looking forward to diving into that matchup for the Bills this coming week because if they decide to show up like that in Orchard Park next Monday, they might as well stay in the locker room because the Bills are going to run them out of town. Their defense was flat. They got ran the hell over by Saquon Barkley. They allow the Giants offense that is very, very mediocre at best to dictate that game in the biggest moments. And they flat out blew the game. And in the biggest moment of the weekend, how about former offensive Bills coordinator Brian Dable with the biggest balls of the weekend going for two with Daniel Jones and gets it and wins the ball game. Incredible. Tip your cap to Brian Dable on an extraordinary week one opener. Was not expecting him to get a W in that situation at all. But hey, for the Bills, we'll take that any day of the week. A potential AFC playoff team with an extra loss in their pocket, we'll take that all day of the week. You know, people forget last year, You know, the the Titans exited early, but people forget the Titans were the number one seed in the AFC a season ago. It's incredible to think about that. Like, it it really is. They they never seemed it, and they sure as hell don't seem it right now. But they're going to come into Monday night with something to prove you'd think. And they have had the Bills number as of late. Going into last year, I thought the Bills were going to run them out out of the building as well, and it just didn't happen. But there's some key differences this year that I think wind up making a difference. We're going to get into that game throughout the show. Um, Cincinnati Bengals. Wow. You know, <laughs> that, that offensive line last year in the Super Bowl, that might have been the worst offensive line in the history of the NFL to make a Super Bowl, which was impressive, sort of. Because you watch what Joe Burrow was able to do behind a, an egregious offensive line, and, and you almost gave him more credit than he was than he deserved, just because it was a tougher task to do the things he was pulling off. And then they go into the offseason, and they rework that entire offensive line. They upgrade it to be to an NFL standard, far from what it was a season ago. And then you're looking at the Bengals, and you're saying, man, if they're able to fix that component of their, of their team, look out. That's going to be a scary, scary team. Well... Pittsburgh's D, once again, in week one, similar to what they did to the Bills last year, but not nearly as bad as they did to the Bengals yesterday. They wind up winning the game. I had told you in the offseason, I said that the Steelers last year, they're a playoff team under Big Ben. And if you don't think they're going to be just as good, if not better, with Mitch Trubisky leading the helm, you're wrong. And that's exactly what happened. Mitch Trubisky is perfect for that team. He's never going to be a guy who leads the charge and wins you a game, but I don't think he's going to be the guy to lose you a game either. And with a defense like that, the Steelers once again could be primed for a playoff run. 
100%. That defensive front is extraordinary. Now, of course, TJ Watt hurt. And it's unfortunate for Steelers fans. It's unfortunate for anybody who's a fan of the league. You hate to see the top guys go down. The Bills won't have to face TJ Watt when they play him in a couple weeks. He's not going to be available. And we know what he was able to do against us last year. TJ Watt is a game record. But with that aside, yesterday, the Pittsburgh Steelers were able to force seven sacks against a totally revamped Bengals offensive line. And they not only were able to get Joe Burrow on the ground, but they forced him into four interceptions and a fumble. Joe Burrow on his lonesome turned the ball over five times. The Bengals did everything in their power to give that game away yesterday, down to the missed field goal. Or excuse me, the missed extra point. Which, by the way, Minka Fitzpatrick, and this is what I'm talking about when it comes to the Steelers. You can just never count them out. They're like the grittiest team you've ever seen. They always find a way to either be in the game or steal it from you. And that's a credit to Mike Tomlin. I mean, nobody better than Mike Mike Tomlin when it comes to getting the most out of nothing. And that's what we saw yesterday.